What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. This will be a spoiler pre-review for Alien Romulus. Alien Romulus is directed and co-written by Fede Alvarez and it is starring Kaylee Spaney, David Johnson, Archie Renox, I think is how you pronounce that, Isabella Merced, or Merced, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu and several others. Now, this story is revolving around a group of colonists. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. Now, I will say that Alien Romulus is a thrilling but straightforward creature film that puts the spotlight back on the xenomorph in solid fashion. Alvarez reviving a dormant franchise seems to always go well, and this latest effort didn't disappoint. I'm happy to say that. Alien Romulus is strong enough to stand on its own while also featuring some of the elements from past entries for fans to enjoy. If you're someone who hasn't seen the first set of movies, I would implore you to watch it just to have the full enjoyment from this movie. Now, six colonists from what I believe was referred to as the Jackson Colony are struggling to earn their travel permits so they come up with a plan to explore this abandoned station called Romulus so they can steal the equipment they want from it to leave the Jackson Colony. Upon arriving, their concerns about being caught turn into a fight for survival. Rain and her brother Andy, whose primary focus is keeping Rain safe, function as the heart of the film. But aside from them, their peers, Bajorn, Tyler, his sister Kay, and Navarro, are all very one note and uninteresting. But I'm able to grow invested thanks to the strong performances from everyone involved. Alvarez co wrote the screenplay with Frodo Siagues. And what makes this so different compared to the ones I've just finished revisiting in this franchise is there's less focus on sci-fi ideas and full commitment to scary monster versus unaware targets. So perhaps diehards of the franchise won't be open to that as much as I was. But I love the full commitment to scary monster versus unaware targets and less attention to sci-fi ideas and all the things that we know were implemented in those first two films and motivations behind the company mentioned, Wailing Yutani, all that good stuff. Now, this approach works for the most part, but what's holding it back is how thin the supporting cast is. Luckily, the writers put a big focus on humanity's relationship with AI, in this case synthetics, and how their moral compass is nothing compared to ours. It's an especially crucial aspect to Rain's journey throughout the story as she learns to not be so emotionally invested to the point that her judgment could get real people harmed. The screenplay provides enough for me to sympathize with Rain's circumstances while making her worth getting behind as a protagonist, which allows me to want to see her wise up when it comes to these synthetics. It's also a nice adjustment to the story considering Ellen Ripley had trust issues towards synthetics and now I have a well-rounded resourceful protagonist in Rain who is a bit too trusting. In terms of dialogue, I found every exchange to be realistic and authentic. Although towards the end, we get a regurgitated line that was awkward since it's so obviously existing just for nostalgia purposes. And it's the way it's spaced out too for the audience to pipe in that seals its fate for me as being cringy and awkward. Exposition dumping does occur, mostly to fill in the blanks for anyone coming in without watching the first film at least, but it didn't overstay its welcome. But given the nature of what is what it's pertaining to, I would have just taken the show not tell approach is all versus having a character dump it. Alvarez and his co-writer don't overexpose the xenomorph either, at least not to me, which heightened the moments it appears on screen in all of its glory. They definitely leaned on us wanting to see the xenomorph when it came to delivering scares, getting you on edge and terrified, even if a few jumps, cheap jump scares did occur in between all of that. Most of the scares do feel earned and are mostly, mostly reliant on building these suspenseful sequences up and building up hype around the xenomorph and the face huggers of course spaney and johnson are the stars of the cast but i do want to applaud Isab isabel merced who played k and absolutely sells the heck out of this story her facial expressions make this already nerve-wracking scenario 10 times more intense she has a killer scream at one point as well which i found to be very impressive it just harkens back to my point earlier about the cast making up for their otherwise thin roles. Spaney is having an incredible year as far as I can tell between Civil War and now this. Her talent won't go unnoticed in my house this year, and that's all I can really say there. Her portrayal of Rain is so strong, she excels in conveying desperation and fear. Alvarez delivers multiple suspenseful sequences. The most effective technique for me was how he kept us in anticipation of the full reveal of the Xenomorph, edging us until we want, until we get what we want, and it works. The atmosphere is constantly intense. Pacing wise, during the first act, it did start to drag when it wanted to be more like Alien, but once it shifted in being like Aliens, it was fine. 
The practical effects on display are phenomenal, and I thought it added to Spaney's performance quite well, made it more convincing during certain sequences. This is noticeable because there's an awful CGI plot device that took me out every time it was on screen. It overstayed its welcome, and it was so unconvincing when you have everything else around you almost being just practical, practical effects. So it took me out of the overall experience, and the fact that it was overexposed so much was aggravating to witness, but it didn't kill the overall product because of Alvarez's talent, and he was able to, of course, keep things afloat in the end. Now, the soundtrack, the score, the sound design also helps keep this immersive, keep things intense, keep every keep the stakes high. A lot of the dire situations that these characters face is heightened by this score and the, the music that's featured in the film. Alien Romulus is just a solid, straightforward creature film. That's really all I can say about it. When I compare it to what I've just revisited in the other Alien films, it's definitely not putting so much focus on the sci-fi ideas and more so, again, a full commitment to Xenomorph versus misinformed, ignorant targets. And again, for the most part, it worked. But I can see where someone like a friend of mine who has always loved the scientific ideas and the the way it's thought provoking in those earlier films and even in the later ones, those scientific ideas taking a backseat might not sit well with some diehard fans. Again, I'm thinking of a friend of mine who I know probably is not going to like this after they watch it tonight. I thought that Alien Romulus was a good movie. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. It has its shortcomings. It's not great by any means, but it is a solid film. I would give it a 7 out of 10. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.